Lincoln Syrup and uh, commercial. Um, I think Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, that had to be done because they, frankly, it was never an ideal structure. They weren't, they were government operations, but not. They were, they, right. they were, they were too many of those decisions were made Implicit. by politics. Uh, but they got in trouble because the market got in trouble. That is, they weren't big players in the, in the subprime mortgage market. They just were on the, they were the ultimate guarantor of all these mortgages and the value of everything went down. I think that uh, it looked bizarre that you had the, the uh, you did Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Bear Stearns, then said no to Lehman Brothers and yes to AIG. What does that mean? Does that mean there was no principal involved? Probably. I, I think that uh, my instinct would have been to offer Lehman Brothers a line of credit at least, something along the lines of what was offered to AIG. It's not as big. The consequences to the economy are not as great. But it had a – psychologically, it was unsettling. And I think that uh, not because I want to bail out Wall Street, but because I don't want every homeowner in this country – to lose all the value. Most Americans, the only savings they've got is in their homes. Of course. And so uh, until we get a uh, settlement, like I said, Hillary's offered some good ideas. Barney Frank, the congressman from Massachusetts, has offered some good ideas. The uh, administration has other tax. Uh, McCain and Obama are weighing in. The main thing I want to say is let's don't make this like a meal where you're hungry 30 seconds later. Let's have very few sound bites. Nobody trying to get short-term advantage. And let's look at where we are and figure out how to fix this thing over the long run. If you've got the right kind of regulation, the right kind of capital requirements, the right kind of disclosure to investments, then you won't have to do a bailout in the future because anybody that fails, it'll be obvious that it was irresponsible management, maybe even illegal conduct, and it's the kind of thing you shouldn't bail out. But right now, you're not bailing them out. You're trying to save the American financial system. And the savings of, of hundreds of millions of Americans. It's really a bailout of the system, not yeah, a yeah, individual Yeah, yeah, because, if, yeah, look, I mean, the, the, if, if Wall Street drops 500 points one day and 450 points the next day, and on the second day banks don't even want to lend money to each other anymore, then if you help this or that group, you're not doing it for them. You didn't, this wasn't done for AIG. It was done because AIG is so big that if they didn't have some way to manage their bad loans over a longer period of time, the consequences, not to AIG, but to everybody in the American system are going to be great. There is no American that has not been potentially damaged by what's happened in the last two days, even if you don't have a bank account. 28 million working Americans don't have a bank account. They're still weak if everybody else is in trouble. Let me ask you this, President Clinton. You said, you know, we were in a period where money was so easy, rates were so low. Um, you really were the dream team, you, Alan Greenspan, and Bob Rubin, overseeing the, one of the greatest, if not the greatest, economic uh, periods uh, we know. But isn't it fair to say Alan Greenspan is somewhat to blame here for leaving rates as low as they were? You can argue that, but l l let's just talk about this. I don't believe that was the primary factor here. I think that if, if you look at it for, apart from this, there was no inflation in this economy for a long time. There was a lot of competition in open markets keeping inflation down. There was money seeking safe haven. America was thought to be that. So even if the Fed had kept rates a little higher, I think the money that most people get, which has nothing to do with the government and its policies now, would still have been available at very low cost. And the fundamental problem is this. This is my opinion now. This, I'm not speaking for Hillary, for the government, for anything. I think the fundamental problem is this. If you look at, we have now good economic data on the first five years of this decade, okay? Forty percent of our growth was in housing. The other 60 percent in consumer spending. So what happened? That's that it attracted the money. And after a while, the consumers had maxed out their credit cards, taken out all the second mortgages on homes you could take them out. And there's only so much you can do with even commercial as well as residential real estate. 
And without a more balanced economic strategy, this thing was going to come to not a very good end. Now, the other thing that happened is you had the finance houses, in effect, supplementing what the, the, financial, the traditional banks were doing. That is, packaging these mortgages and derivatives, highly leveraged. You didn't innovation. have Innovation. Yeah. It was innovation, but it was innovation without adequate disclosure, capital, and margin requirements. So what happened was it was the magnet that attracted the money because it was the only game in town. And I, I personally think you may fault Mr. Greenspan one way or the other, but the truth is if it raised rates a little bit, there was no inflation in this economy, you were and there was lots of money. You were still going to be able to get good money at low prices. And the real problem was that good money at low prices didn't have a lot of options apart from housing or other real estate because there was not enough other growth. I believe if we'd started a serious energy policy six years ago, we might be in this fix, but it wouldn't be nearly as bad because we'd had a whole other range of things for people to invest money in, areas for people to work in, and less incentive for people to, to move this money in ever more clever ways just through the same old hole in real estate.